So this is actually an image of the whole sky. It has this funny oval shape, but uh, it's meant to enclose all of the sky that's around us. And what we see is a picture of what the sky looks like in microwaves. Microwaves are a special kind of light. It's the same kind of light that people use in their microwave ovens, really. But it turns out our universe is full of it. And we can observe it. We can make pictures of it. And this is what a picture of those microwaves looks like. What can you see on there? So what you can see here, in fact, is a, a representation in what we call false color. So these are not real colors because we can't see microwaves directly. But what we're trying to show in this image are the tiny differences in temperature of the sky from one place to another. So for example, if you look over here, this part of the sky has a slightly hotter temperature than this part over here. Right? And these small differences in temperature actually contain a lot of information about our universe. And that is what we are trying to uh, measure. And from that, we will extract some scientific information. So, how is that created? This map was created by a satellite. So we have a satellite called Planck, which is uh, out in space, quite far away from the Earth. And it is observing the sky. It is taking pictures of the sky. And it does so slowly. It takes it about six months to create a picture of the whole sky. And we've done that several times over. This is just one of those pictures of the whole sky. But this is a, a final map. This is a kind of like a, 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 a result map from that mission. Is that right? That's right. But it's also real light. I mean, you know, if we, if we could observe directly that sky, this is what it would look like, basically. Okay. Now, what happens is, is that, of course, this particular light here comes from a very early time in the universe. And we have separated it from other sources of light which are closer to us in the universe. For example, our own galaxy, the one in which we are embedded, is also radiating and emitting many of these microwaves. And so it kind of disturbs our picture that we want to take of the early universe. And what we do is we separate these various emission components by using special software techniques. Image processing, you might call it. And by doing that processing of our pictures, we can extract this beautiful picture of the early universe. When you look at that, what do you see? What jumps out at you? Because when I look at that, I see orange and blue. <laughs> What do you see? Uh -huh. Well, there are lots of things to see here. The first thing is that it looks very much the same across the whole sky. And that's one of the major discoveries of the last century, actually. And that tells us a lot already about how the universe behaves. It tells us essentially that the universe has the same behavior almost any part of the sky that you want to look at mm, on a large scale. The other thing you can see is that most of the information or the signal is in these really tiny spots, so spots of about this size. This size corresponds to about the size of the full moon, so it's a bit larger than that. And that's also telling you something about the early universe, because this light comes from the early universe. We can tell from that particular size, which is a preferential size in this image, you know, what was the size of the universe at that time. And that's actually an important information. You call this a map. A map, to most people, is forests and lakes and blue bits and brown bits and green bits. What, how does that correspond to what we see there? As, how is that a map? Well, it's a map in the same way as uh, we make a map of the sky in optical light, for example. If you see a map of the sky with all the constellations on it, right, that's also a map. It's a picture of the whole sky. And that's what we have here, except it's in a different kind of light. That's the only real difference. You could also have a, a map of the Earth, for example, in this kind of projection. So you could open the Earth and spread it on a flat piece of paper such that it has this shape as well. 
So in our case, it's not the Earth, but it's the sky. What are the big results in layman's terms from the from the Planck mission? Because you are you are announcing results. What are the big findings? What are the big questions that are, that are so many? Yeah. So I think there are two parts to that answer. Uh, to, to put it simply, because there are many findings, of course. One thing, one finding is that the universe is extremely simple, and that we find by fitting models of what we think the universe should look like 